Bryce Canyon National Park may be on your list of things to do if you love national parks and the outdoors. So today we're gonna take you to the city. It's not really a city, it's more of a small town called Tropic, Utah. And if you keep heading on the road away from the National Park entrance, within a few minutes, you're gonna come across a little town called Tropic. It is a very small town and we drove through it several times and very, very small, but has a history. I mean, I don't know about you, but every time I get through a place like this, I get this itch to check it out and explore because you know that there's a story yes. to the town. And there sure enough is. They yeah. actually have what they call um, a heritage center, mm -hmm. which has a small museum in it. Yeah, so that's one of the things that we stumbled across. In Tropic, you literally have Bryce Canyon National Park as your background, and you have the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument right at its front door. Mm -hmm. So there is an immense amount of scenery around this area, beautiful scenery. This little town will provide you these magnificent views in every direction you look in, and it's just a short car drive to the Bryce Canyon National Park or the Kodachrome Basin State Park. The people who settled here thought that the climate was kind of fairly mild and I think warmer from where it is that they came from, so hence the name Tropic, for because for them, I guess in comparison of what they were used to, they thought that this was more of a tropical type of climate. So you said it's a small town, and when I when I think about our drive through it, when we say small, my memory seems to be, it just seemed to be about, what, four or five blocks in one direction, yeah. and maybe as many blocks in the other direction, so real, real small. They even have a museum. So we parked the car, and one of the signs that we saw gave some information about the origins of this town and there was a quote on one of them that struck me as interesting and it was about the experience of when they brought water to the town and initially when the settlers came here i believe there was not water in the town itself and after a bit of effort mm -hmm. now they they had irrigation and the quote on the sign says it will be no exaggeration to say that this was the greatest jollification ever had in this section of the country we had barbecue, we had beef, we had veal, we had lamb and mutton. We danced all night until broad daylight. And that was their description of celebrating the arrival of water via the Tropic Ditch. And this event happened on May 23rd, 1892. Mm. And they equate that event that day the the bringing of water as the birth of the town so now yeah. that you have water there now you can start to form a town mm -hmm. and that is one of the things that has happened there okay. so our next stop was this museum that we had spied i think on our drive so we opened the door and it was open it and right open. there was a very nice lady in front and she gave us a brief little description of the museum and said there's only two rooms, you know, pretty much have at it. And so we went to the museum part first mm -hmm. and it had a lot of displays about what it was like in Tropic in the early years. Yeah, not only the early years, so this first room that we went into talked about the geology of the area and the landscape and actually you know they they tried to portray what the land was like over millions of years and there was this one kind of a map on the wall with a you are here and a depiction of way back when that they believed where tropic is located today and, it, and when you're there it just seems like this barren almost desert-like environment and they believe 50 million years ago from the geological research that they've done that this used to be part of a large freshwater formation so there used to be a large ancient lake in the area that over millennia had disappeared and there's fossil records that provide evidence that there was a rich sea life and in fact in the museum among the things that you're going to see are fossils that were recovered in this area and so those were uh those are pretty neat to look at i always enjoy that i well you know i do they had displays of what it was like 
uh, when the Native Americans were there in mm -hmm. that area, living in that area. There was some actual artifacts from that time, which is very, very interesting to me. And they had some of the specimens dated as well too. So you know, one that we saw was a, a fossilized turtle. That one was dated as 80 million years old. We also saw dinosaur, dinosaur bones, bones that were also dated at 80 million years old. So if you like fossils, kind of that natural history, mm -hmm. you're gonna get a sense of that. Also in the same first room that we were in, there was a little bit of history about mining that happened in the town of Tropic after the settlers arrived. This would be a turning point for the local economy. There's on display stock certificates from the early mining companies and these companies, and I think this would probably would have been in the late 1800s, early 1900s, they would have mined for coal, for bentonite, they even tried to mine for gold, but that proved to be unsuccessful. That's a little glimpse of what you're gonna see in the one room, and then we went across the hallway Just into right across, yeah. another room to see what else they had to show us. Which was more modern history of the, 20th the town, century. 20th yeah. century. It contained mainly exhibits from the early to mid 20th century. You walk into this room and you would move around the room because everything is displayed against the walls. Mm -hmm. So we kind of went counterclockwise and you can view the early 20th century entertainment, household items, things that they would use in a daily living. They had music and film, they had a phonograph, they had a silent film projector, which I remember that, that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. They had old typewriters. I mean, just anything you could think of that kind of displayed what it was like to live in that early 20th century. As we continued our walk around the room, the last, one of the last things that we saw there, and this always grabs my eye, so anything that's music related, there was a nice reed organ in the uh, corner of the room that was used at the local LDS church, and there was a portrait of the lady who played the instrument sitting on top of the organ. So uh, it's a little example of the kind of things you would see in this museum. So for us, it was a short visit. I found it super interesting. I always like to learn about life in these very, very small communities. Mm -hmm. I don't think we were inside more than about a half hour or so. But no, was... and we took our time too. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it is very, very small, but very enjoyable. Well, lastly, with the inside of the museum, at least, there was no fee to right. see anything. So right. I imagine you could make a donation mm -hmm. um, if okay. you wanted to, so. But we weren't done. We were not we done. We walked outside and we saw a area that looked like it was a memorial and walked over and it is a veterans memorial which had listed all the people in the area that has served in the military mm -hmm. there was quite a few there was um, yeah. and it was quite a big time span i think it, it went all the way from the very early years where it might have the, been like world war world one, war one yeah. i think it started world war one and it went all the way to the korean war i don't remember the vietnam war but I remember the Korean War. It spanned several yeah. military events. So that was fun. We kind of just uh, perused it, looked at names, mm -hmm. and a lot of the names were um, the same. So I assume they were all from the same family. Mm -hmm. And there was a area, I think, that was dedicated to those that perished during yeah. wartime. Yeah. So a nice memorial that you can also spend some time viewing and just thinking about people that served this country mm -hmm. and they come from all states all cities and even very 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 small towns like mm -hmm. tropic utah mm -hmm. so the story is the shakespeare the hendersons the nelsons they're all founding members of tropic after bryce had um, started the town and the names are all the, vol they volunteered and or were drafted as the wars came along since they've been here for such a long time. There's several wars that, um, that, that these particular families went through. So that's why there's so many names on, on the, the monument. Yeah. Not that they died necessarily, hmm. it's just that they volunteered. volunteered. So we were told that the cabin of Ebenezer Bryce, whom this, um, I guess he was a founder in this town. Founder, yeah. There's a cabin that was supposed to be on this property, but apparently it's in storage, and so we're not able to see it, and they don't know when it's gonna be put back together again. 
So that's one of the things in this very small town of Tropic that we're not able to see. So on we go. If you plan on visiting Bryce Canyon National Park, just know that there's other things within a relatively short driving distance you can do. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you've seen some things that'll help you plan your future travel adventures. And if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and like us. And if you have any comments, we'd love to hear from you. And until next time, keep on traveling and we hope to see you in at the places, places where, where we, we go. go.